49. Robinson trying to stay perfect. The big guns, Keyshawn Johnson for USC, Darnell Autry for NU. We start with SC. First drive of the game for them. Keyshawn on the business end from Brad Auten. 30 yards, that would set up a score. 7-0 USC leads. Northwestern answers right back. Steve Schnur finds Dwayne Bates. Nifty spin, and he gets down to the two. Two plays after that, there he is. Darnell Autry cuts right, take a left turn. He does, gets in, now we're tied at seven. Second quarter of the game. USC now leads 17-7. Schnur to Brian Musso, but he loses his luggage. It gets picked up by Dalen McCutcheon, who goes the other way. He's the son of a running back. He runs like a running back. 53 yards with the moves. 24-10 USC leads at the break. Third quarter now. Gary Barnett, a little chicanery. Yes, it's an onside kick early in the third. Josh Barnes recovers. John Robinson was not indeed looking for that. His team in a bit of trouble. The Wildcats capitalize. Autry running right. He gets in for the score, his second of the game. Two-point conversion is not good. Trojans lead by five. And here they come for some more. Otten to Johnson. We saw this all year, the short throw and then the long run. Keyshawn makes nothing into something. 31-19 USC. The Wildcats close it to five. Fourth quarter, Autry in again. Two-yard score, third of the game. Wildcats lead here by one. Two-point conversion, no good. Still 32-31. The kicker, Adam Abrams, the 46-yarder, the longest field goal of his career. USC now back up on top by two. Late in the fourth, USC up nine. Schnur to Bates. Touchdown, but... After further review, we have holding that nullifies the score. And with that, the Wildcats season comes to a depressing end. USC, 41-32 in the Rose. Taking it in to make it 7 0, but whatever happened to acting like you've been there in the end zone before? Buckeyes get out to the lead. Tennessee has an answer on the ground, and his name is Jay Graham. And he carried today 26 times, 154 yards. This one late, just before halftime, 69 yards for the score. And the Citrus Bowl on a damp, rainy day in Orlando, tied at 7 all at halftime. Third quarter, Peyton Manning throws a wobbly throw, but watch Joey Kent make the adjustment, come back for it, and make a 47-yard TD reception, 14-7 balls. The Buckeyes rally in the fourth. Bobby Hoying, Ricky Dudley, sheds tacklers, and see it. 33 yards, 14 apiece. Tennessee driving to take the lead. Peyton Manning, watch the Buckeye mascot, Brutus, makes the nice grab, but gets barreled over. 96, a tough year for mascots like 95. Tennessee settles for the field goal from Jeff Hall to make it 17-14. Then comes the play you'll see on highlight reels and blooper reels probably to the end of time. Bobby Hoying with a pitch on fourth down, hitting the fullback, Matt Calhoun in the head. Vols get it. John Cooper, something forged to that effect. 20-14 Tennessee with the victory. Eddie George, Heisman winners are now 4-11. Ralphie leading Colorado on, but the Buffs struggled early in this one. Ricky Whittle of Oregon. He sees some holes and there he goes, returning the opening kickoff 63 yards, but all that great run did was set up a field goal and Oregon had a 6-0 lead after one. Second quarter though, 7-6 Colorado, Tony Graziani. Just an awful pass picked off by Marcus Washington. That turned the game around, obviously. Washington going 95 yards for the touchdown. A Cotton Bowl record for the longest INT return for a score. 13-6 Buffs. It was 26 Colorado in the third. The Buffs kick a field goal to make it 23-6. But wait a minute. Oregon had 13 men on the field. Duck coaches can't believe it, but that was the story for them all day. Colorado taking the three off the scoreboard, and Herschel Troutman runs six for the score. 26-6 Colorado. More bad news for Oregon. Graziani, nightmare afternoon. Hit and stripped of the ball by Nick Ziegler. Colorado recovering, and then John Hessler hitting Phil Savoy for the score. Colorado ends up winning this one by 32 points. The Buffs defense forcing five turnovers, three of them committed by Ducks QB Tony Graziani. John Hessler, he finished just 11 of 26 for 115 yards, but he threw for two scores and he ran. Penn State and Auburn, Raleigh Richardson going deep and hitting Joe Juravicious. Great catch. Richardson threw for 217 yards. That throw would set up this touchdown to Mike Archie. Penn State led 16-7 over Terry Bowden's troops. Same score in the third. 
Richardson would break it open. Showing plenty of poise here in the mud, gets back to work and hits one of his favorite targets, Bobby Ingram. Super catch. Ingram wasn't through because here comes was one of his two touchdown catches on the day for Ingram. He had 113 receiving yards, an outback bowl record. Auburn's Patrick Nix, just 5 of 25 of 48 yards, picked off by Kim Herring. Nix smelling pretty bad himself. Both of his INTs led to touchdowns. The turnover would lead to that Kurt Enos TD. Lions were up 36 to 7. And just what Joe Paterno needs, more wetness. Penn State wins by 29. If there is a better college football coach with a month to, pre to prepare than Joe Paterno, who is it? Beating Auburn gave Paterno bowl wins in 10 different locations. He leads everybody. Syracuse Here's trying Jackson, and there goes Malcolm Thomas, Thomas of the Cuse a Jacksonville native in front of the hometown 24 yards to make it seven to nothing after he punched it over from the one got some turf for his efforts Clemson fourth and two after they got the ball and Raymond Priester is stuffed by Donovan Darius Clemson lived and died by the run all day in the orange cash in taking over on downs Donovan McNabb the keeper five yards 13 to nothing as they block the PAT Clemson gets the ball back trying again Neil and Green throwing Kevin Abrams off the deflection picks it one of two Abrams picks it on the day and on the very next play look at this play fake by Donovan McNabb he holds it out with two hands where are you Marvin Harrison there he is just a little bit open 20 to nothing first quarter 27 nothing Syracuse McNabb another fake this on the fake of the end around finding Harrison 56 yards and McNabb on his way to a 309-yard day, he threw for three touchdowns. Clemson is shut out in a bowl game for the first time since 1959. 41 to nothing. Clemson couldn't even take. And here's somebody who wasn't playing at all. Ron Paulus looking to his vital replacement, Tom Krug. And he listened well. First quarter, no score goes up top. Derek Mays is under it. Touchdown. Notre Dame leads 7 nothing. Danny Cannell would tie it at 7. Then in the second quarter, Seminoles are trailing 10-7. Here's Danny. Meet Danny Cannell, scrambling, gets out of the way of two tacklers. Andre Cooper's waiting patiently in the end zone. Got a magazine and got a touchdown. He's second of the night already, 14-10. Nice leap. Second half, the Irish trailing 14-10. Here's Krug, and it's up for grabs. And who got it? Biddy 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 bounce. Derek Mays, the Irish lead 17-14. Look at this one again. Mays tipped it to himself. Another tremendous play. And then in the fourth quarter, the Irish ahead 19-14. Krug to Pete Kriplowitz. Five-yard touchdown. The old tradition of Notre Dame with the tough names. 26-14. It's all over, right? No, maybe not. Hunter Smith punts. Here is D. Feaster of Florida State. And he is feasting. And he is D-man. 41 yards back, the longest return given up by Notre Dame this year, and bad timing. Fourth and five. Is this a team that can convert on that situation? Uh-huh. E.G. Green marshals his way over the middle to the two off the fourth and five, and the Canal rolls right, has plenty of time. Andre Cooper again just in his third of the night. Seminoles make the two and lead 29-26. The Notre Dame with the ball driving. 5.20 to go. It's a fumble. Henry Crockett. That has well have been Davy Crockett out there. Picks up the Mark Edwards mistake, and the Seminoles hold on to the 31-26 win. 